Hey guys, this is TJ of Football, and this is the Week 3 Starts and Sits. At quarterback, we're starting Daniel Jones. He's been averaging over 250 yards per game. In the last two weeks, he's had 15 rushes for 120 yards and two scores on his own. And this week, he's playing against Atlanta. So Atlanta kind of has a terrible defense. I don't know if you guys have noticed. They can attack the run. They can attack the pass game. And the Giants have a healthy Saquon Barkley, which will add to loaded boxes, just like it did last week, where Jones took off nine times for 95 yards on the ground. This is going to be an opportunity for him to get Galladay and Tony involved because he's only got two touchdowns through the air. It, this is his opportunity. At running back, we're starting Chase Edmonds. You know, it's a rushing offense, but the rushing offense doesn't exist at the moment. The offense is Kyler Murray and Kyler Murray's arm. Edmonds has much better hands than James Conner and much better feet, and he's caught all nine of his targets. He's had 20 rushes where Conner is averaging 3.5 yards per carry. Edmonds is close to six. And this week, they play against Jacksonville. Another running back we want to be starting is Miles Sanders. He's been averaging over 85 yards per game, and he still hasn't found the end zone. So Gainwell does chip in, but he isn't taking anything away. He's really playing the Boston Scott role, which is nothing to worry about. And this game has shootout potential. It's against Dallas. There's no Demarcus Lawrence, so he's not going to be clogging the, clogging the box. Zach Ertz is out. And, you know, Miles Sanders has a 12% target share already. And it would have been closer to 18 had Gainwell not closed up in week one against Atlanta. So expect a lot of passes to go Miles Sanders' way. Daniel Jones's guy is named Sterling Shepard, and that's who we're gonna be starting this week. Sterling Shepard has 19 targets for 16 receptions, 207 yards, and a touchdown. Oh, and they're playing Atlanta. Atlanta is giving up more than 30 points per game, and wide receivers playing against Atlanta have just been feasting. Debo Samuel is another name we're gonna be targeting. He's had 20 targets, 15 receptions, 282 yards, and a touchdown of his own. And this week they're playing Green Bay, who only has two takeaways on the entire season, both against Detroit. Green Bay was blown out against the Saints, and the Saints were blown out versus the Panthers, so expect Debo to really take it to him. At tight end, we're going to be starting Jared Cook. He's had 13 targets, 8 catches, but no touchdowns. He had a touchdown called back last week, and you know I think that was like a 35-yard reception. So he's just been feasting because he's had no blocking assignments. He's a 6'5 receiver with a 4'4'9 40-yard dash, and... There was no combine last year due to COVID, but I mean, at the 2020 combine, he would have been tied for the fastest tight end time. Kicking, we're going Daniel Carson. He has a leg and he doesn't miss. He's currently kicking at number one position. He's playing against Miami um, and Vegas wants to be putting up points. They want to be taken seriously, especially this being their first season at their new stadium. They want to be taken seriously. So look for Daniel Carson if he's still on your waiver list. And again, defense, we want to be starting Las Vegas for a couple of reasons. One, we really expect them to be playing hard defense, but also they're playing against Miami, who doesn't have Tua. Tua is going to be out one to two weeks with fractured ribs. Jalen Waddle was injured last week. Will Fuller may not be playing. The running backs, they all had five carries, and they did nothing with it. And Jacoby Brissett did not look great. A quarterback that I'm sitting this week is Jameis Winston. Over the first two weeks, he's thrown for less than 300 yards total. He couldn't get anything done against the Carolina Panthers last week. And Marquez Callaway is not the Mike Thomas replacement we thought he was. He's just a preseason all-star. The offense should be going through Alvin Kamara until further notice. And we're going to be looking for Taysom Hill to make some more appearances. Last week, the guy had two rushes. This week, it's going to be three or four, maybe a couple passing yards too. Look for Jameis Winston on your bench. And consider picking up Taysom Hill if he's available because it's coming. At running back, I want to be sitting Devin Singletary if possible. Over the first two weeks, he's had three fumbles, and Zach Moss is now back into the game. Healthy scratch in week one, but he's always that short yardage back, and Josh Allen is not afraid to throw himself into the end zone for six. Over the first two games, Singletary's had 15 touches per game, while last year he finished out the season with eight touches per game. Josh Allen would rather throw the ball than run it, so over the next couple weeks, Devin Singletary, I wouldn't be surprised if he's averaging you know single-digit fantasy points from here on out. Jalen Waddell, he's got no two of this week. He's going to be playing with Jacoby Brissett, who completed only 60% of his passes, didn't throw a touchdown, and threw an interception. They're going to be looking to slow the game down with Malcolm Brown, Miles Gaskin, Salvon Ahmed. Sure, Waddle did have seven targets last week, but he left the game with an injury. LaVisca Chanel is another guy who left the game with an injury, also having seven targets. They're playing against Arizona this week, so it's going to be a lot of chasing. You know, it's going to be a lot of downfield balls, which are definitely more of Chark and Jones's game. And... James Robinson is finally getting involved in those passes near the near the end zone and near the line of scrimmage too, which if LaVisca can't be getting those balls, I don't know what good he is. At tight end, I want to be fading Adam Trotman. In week one, he had a 30% target share, but in week two, he didn't collect a single target. Matt, Matt Judon, Dante Hightower, and Calvin Noy always make it difficult for the tight ends. And, you know, you can't start any Saint not named Alvin Kamara until further notice. 
The Chargers are a defense that I'm fading as well this week. Do you ever start a DST against the Chiefs? Two DSTs that they played against so far, the Ravens and the Browns, which are probably top five, definitely top 10 defenses, were held to five and four points respectfully. So thank you so much, guys. Those are our starts and sits for week three. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, TGI Fantasy Football. Listen to the podcast at TGI Football, and check out the Instagram at TGI Football as well. Thanks.